When the Tissot PRX chronograph debuted as part of the revamped PRX line, it left many eagerly wondering, how does it contend with the wildly popular PRX Powermatic 80? Ultimately, is it worth paying more than $1,000 over the Powermatic 80's price tag of $675? After all, the Powermatic 80 already provides an undeniable value proposition at its price point, backed up by premium finishing, a stealthy 70s inspired design, and a workhorse caliber with an industry leading 80 hours of power reserve. So in this guide, we'll look to answer those questions and more as we dive into the PRX Chronograph's technical specifications, beginning with the case, the dial, the movement, and the bracelet, before moving on to our own subjective thoughts and critiques to provide our opinion on who this chronograph is truly built for, and whether or not a price tag of $1,825 is justified in the context of the PRX Powermatic 80. So let's dive in. Right out of the gate, the Tissot PRX Chronograph runs heel to toe with its smaller PRX siblings, the PRX Powermatic 80 and the PRX 35. Embodying similar finishing, the iconic tonneau case shape, the razor sharp flat integrated lugs, and the stealthy single link bracelet which all keep the PRX Chrono visibly tied to the same family. At first, without knowing the specifications, we were equally impressed with the chronograph's external appearance as we were with the PRX Powermatic 80. That is to say that the balanced mix of vertical brushing and mirror polishes in all the right places across the case and bezel, the beautiful 369 panda dial full of depth everywhere you look, the rose gold dial details, and the front row seat to the Valjoux caliber tucked inside through the bright exhibition case bag. The sheer presence of the Tissot PRX chronograph is also more substantial than its closest relatives, wearing larger, wider, and higher on the wrist. So then, who's perfect for this all-around larger and flashier PRX? Well, let's start answering that question by looking first at the case. Released just under a year after the PRX Powermatic 80 in July of 2022, the PRX Chronograph carried over the majority of its predecessor's case construction and finishing, due in no small part, we assume, to the smashing success of the Powermatic 80 itself, as its design was undeniably well received across the industry from experts to enthusiasts alike. The main case now sports a larger profile, up by 2mm for a total of 42mm, and sports a compact 41.5mm lug to lug, thanks to the near absence of lugs themselves as the case squares off sharply at the corners with the integrated end link sitting flush against the fixed bezel. Yes, the PRX chronograph sits pretty high at 14.5mm, but we'll push into the wrist a bit, sinking it close to a 13 or 13.5mm in reality. For context, our wearer sports a wrist measurement just shy of 8 inches, and if you've worn the PRX Powermatic 80, that reference sits at 10.4mm in vertical height for context. This taller dimension, combined with the 2mm increase in case diameter over the Powermatic 80's 40mm, could definitely push this chronograph into oversized territory, but the integrated bracelet design and case construction allows the short lug to lug to act as a counterbalance. All said and done, if you like the look of a chunkier watch, the PRX Chrono probably won't disappoint even if it balances out some. It also clocks in at 184 grams over the 134 grams of the PRX Powermatic 80, so just a bit heavier there by about 1.8 ounces. For obvious reasons, the PRX Chrono adds two substantial start-stop pushers at the 2 o'clock and the 4 o'clock, the topmost activating and stopping the timing hand with the bottommost resetting to the 12 o'clock position when needed. On the right, sandwiched in between the pushers, the push-pull crown predictably adjusts the hour and minute hands and modestly prevents water incursion up to 100 meters. On the left, as a detail easy to miss about the 10 o'clock position, Tissot adds a necessary date pusher to accommodate its caliber's construction, but more on that later. The fixed and highly polished sloping stainless steel bezel is a definite carryover from previous PRX releases, so nothing new to report on here, but we'll maintain that it does an excellent job guiding the eye up to the dial and provides great cadence against the straight vertical brushing of the flat case that it rests on. On the 180, Tissot mirrors the high polish of the front bezel with a beautiful case back bezel, framing the self-winding Valjoux caliber tucked inside. The duotone dial is offered in two colorways, our black and white panda dial and a navy blue and black combo, both laid out in a classic 369 composition. Simply put, they're both beautiful, and although we tried our best to capture its subtle details on camera, we'd highly recommend getting a hold of the chronograph in person to fully appreciate its character up close. In our opinion, the dial has excellent cadence. Under bright sapphire, it oscillates between black and white, beginning with the outermost black chapter ring that frames the dial and allows the eye to bounce around between its details. The straight vertical brushing on the dial background also serves to break up the many circular shapes of the subdials themselves. The PRX Chrono subdials are laid out in a traditional 3, 6, and 9 pattern, courtesy of the Valjoux caliber at the watch's heart, employing a trio of 30 minute, 12 hour, and 60 second counters, and a seconds hand stopwatch controlled by the adjacent pushers. 
And while this chrono certainly pushes towards affordable luxury and away from the traditional utilitarian functionality of a timing chronograph, Tissot inlays a modest amount of superluminova into the highly polished rose gold hands and the similarly finished thin angular hour markers. Shifting lanes, let's start with what we can see of the movement through the exhibition case bag. Ultimately, you're hit with an overwhelming amount of detail to take in. Circular graining across two levels, the gold contrast of the balance and wheels peeking out from underneath, and bi-directional vertical brushing etched into the self-winding Tissot branded rotor. Internally, the Ida Valju A05.H31 automatic caliber lies at the heart of the Tissot PRX chronograph, reserving an impressive 60 hours of power. Even though it's a 20 hour decrease from the Powermatic 80, it's still by no means a modest amount. With 27 joules, a simple date complication nestled at the 4 o'clock position, and 3 subdials, the movement provides overall solid value at this price point. If you haven't already seen our guide on the best watches under $2,000, we make specific reference that Tissot also uses this Valju caliber and other chronograph references, like the Tissot Heritage 1973 and the PRS 516. As we mentioned before, the A05H31 builds in a trio of 30 minute, 12 hour, and 60 second counters with smooth sweeps and clean legibility, each with rose gold hands that match the chronograph's main hour, minute, and seconds hands, giving the overall viewing experience a rich mix of finishing and contrast. We also spoke about the mini day pusher at the 10 o'clock position just a few moments ago and we want to touch on that briefly before moving on. A watchmaker can choose to keep this movement's feature or bypass it. In the case of the PRX chronograph, it keeps it. But why choose to make it more difficult to change the date instead of just building it into the crown's functions? We can only take a guess, but by doing so, it does take some of the wear and tear off the crown itself. Often, finding the right position to adjust the date can cause unnecessary strain on the fragile internal mechanics of the crown itself. So smart choice here by Tissot. Even if you find changing the setting a bit cumbersome, it's ultimately self-preserving. The integrated bracelet has really always been a hit, ever since the PRX line's advent in the 70s. I think there's very few who would argue this. There's no indication that Tissot wouldn't carry this over from the Powermatic 80 and we're glad they doubled down. The single link integrated stainless steel bracelet is interchangeable given Tissot's quick release functionality on the back side of the case. The PRX chronograph uses a 13mm lug width up from the Powermatic 80's 12mm to adapt to the proportions of the larger case, but it keeps everything else the same. And as we've mentioned before when covering this reference, much of the PRX's charm stems from the iconic flat link single row default bracelet that comes standard with the watch, and as such, we'd recommend picking up the PRX chronograph to wear as is, like our other top PRX picks. Even at its price tag, we could still take or leave the push button butterfly clasp. We understand this is Tissot's bread and butter, and we've levied some critiques at its use in the past, however, the more we've thought about it in the case of the PRX line, this design does allow the bracelet to sit flush and appear undisturbed all the way around the wrist when adjoining the Tissot and the 1853 links close together. So after providing you a thorough overview of the PRX chronograph, part of Tissot's T-Classic collection, let's bring this full circle and talk a bit about who this chronograph might be right for. In our opinion, it's overall more substantial on the wrist no matter how you cut it. Yes, it does balance out a bit thanks to the lug to lug, but overall the thickness will make it more prominent in any case. And plus, the dial was meant to be seen. This isn't a toolish chronograph meant to fly under the radar or for any serious utility, so we can see this being the appropriate pick for white collar situations where you want a bit more character on the wrist than what a normal three-hander may be able to afford. That is to say that it's certainly a conversation starter, so lean into it. And at $1,825, we agree with those who say it's priced appropriately for the movement and the attention to detail alone, keeping all the most loved elements of the PRX line at the forefront. If you have less than $1,000 to spend, you're in truly safe hands with the PRX PRMatic 80 anyway, but if you've been conflicted between the two, we hope our hands-on guide helped clear the air.